The death of Jesus has been the most tremendously miraculous event that history has ever recorded. Jesus was not the first to be crucified, nor was he the last man to suffer that gruesome fate, but the circumstances surrounding his death, the events that took place afterward, including the fact that he resurrected after three days, made his story splendid. Not only Christians, but the majority of people believe that the death of Jesus Christ was not an ordinary occurrence. Many would also agree with me that the death of Jesus was more like a sacrifice. This is true because Jesus died for a crime he was not guilty of. His death redeemed many sinful people and also saved them from the consequences of their sins. I wonder what our fate would have been if Jesus had not been kind and loving enough to willingly die for us as no one else was willing or able to pay the price for the whole wide world. You can say that the crucifixion and death of Jesus was a powerful story of love which, although it has been shared for countless generations, still continues to gladden the hearts of generations to come. Have you ever pondered why Jesus would willingly take the form of man and allow himself to experience raw pain just so he could spare our lives from Satan and the bondage of sin? Jesus' death was epic because he died in our place. He died as a substitute for those who were really guilty and who deserved to die. Although he didn't deserve to die, he still willingly died for our sake, and God was also gracious because he permitted his son to die for us. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. John chapter 3 verse 16. We need to set our hearts and lives aright with God. Acknowledge the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross and be ready and willing to do God's will every day of our lives. The term something happens has been used repeatedly when discussing the crucifixion, death and resurrection of Jesus. We need to understand the significance of all that happened after Jesus died so that we would be able to worship God more because you cannot truly worship God when you do not understand the depth of his sacrifice on the cross. If you think that you fully understand what happened after the death of Jesus, then you need to think again. So, in optimism of better understanding, I would like us to meditate deeply upon these five significant things that happened after Jesus died. And I hope that we would also be able to understand how it happened so that we can worship and honor Jesus the more. One of the significant things that happened after Jesus died was that our sins were instantly placed vicariously on God's sinless Son. Our judgment was poured out on Him because He became our substitute. We know this because immediately after Jesus died, darkness covered the face of the earth. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. Matthew 27 verse 45 this was not the first time darkness was recorded to cover the face of the earth. In the first instance was when the Israelites were under the captivity of the Egyptians. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. And Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt for three days. They saw not one another, neither rose any from his place for three days. But all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. Exodus 10 verse 21 to 23. However, the darkness that covered the earth when Jesus died was not as intense as the darkness that covered Egypt. It was not complete darkness because the people present could still see what was happening on the cross. I am certain that many people were really thinking, and probably hoping that Jesus would not die, especially when Jesus began saying. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Some of them that stood there, when they heard that, said, This man calleth for Elias. And perhaps when darkness covered the face of the earth, they thought, Oh yes, something is about to happen. 
or probably Jesus is about to miraculously come down from the cross. They all had this thought because they were not able to understand the depth of the essence of the death of Jesus Christ. Even though Jesus had the ability to come down from the cross, he did not because he knew that was the only way he could reconcile us back to our Father. Jesus was only quoting from Psalm 22 verse 1. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me? And from the words of my roaring, this sounded as though Jesus was in despair and heartbroken. But then, when Jesus cried out the last time, he knew that he had succeeded and that he had finally redeemed all of mankind. The darkness that covered the face of the earth cannot be explained by any natural cause. We can even say that the darkness that covered the face of the earth was a sign that God was sad because of the death of his son. Jesus paid the price for us because of his death and resurrection. We can now be called sons and daughters of God. Another significant event that happened was that even the earth felt the impact of Jesus' death because an earthquake suddenly occurred when Jesus died. The earthquake that occurred when Jesus died was not merely a geological event. It is a sure sign that even nature felt the impact of Jesus' sacrifice. When the soldiers and those around saw the earthquake and all that was happening, they could no longer deny that Jesus is the Son of God and not an ordinary man. They were so terrified that they even confessed with their own mouths that Jesus is the Son of God. Now when the centurion and they that were with him, watching Jesus saw the earthquake, and those things that were done they feared greatly, saying, Truly, this was the Son of God. Matthew 27, verse 54. No one present at the death of Jesus could consider it an ordinary death. They all confessed that his death was unique. The earth opened when Jesus died as a symbol that all of creation would feel the profound impact of his death. Another miraculous event that occurred was that we were all granted the privilege to come boldly before God's presence. We know this because the veil covering the entrance to the tabernacle tore from top to bottom. In the past, only the high priest had the privilege of entering the Holy of Holies because it was believed to be where God dwelt, and a curtain blocked the entrance. But immediately after Jesus died, this curtain was torn in two from top to bottom. This was a clear sign that the sacrifice of Jesus had been accepted and that we can now boldly approach God's throne of grace. We now have direct access to God the Father because we no longer need any priest to intercede on our behalf. The destruction of the veil at the tabernacle indicates that God's presence is not confined to a space behind a curtain in the temple, and we no longer need anyone to help us access the presence of God. The death of Jesus granted us total forgiveness of our sins, and now everyone has full access to the presence of God. Another remarkable event that happened after Jesus died was that many saints who had previously died rose up, and they were even given the privilege to visit their loved ones. This occurred as clear proof that Jesus had power over death and that he had overcome sin, death, and Satan. Jesus' death did not mark the end of his life. Rather, it marked the beginning of a new era, an era where death does not signify the end of a person's life, an era that indicates we can have a much better and more pleasant life after death. God has authority over everything, including death and its vices. Therefore, we should no longer fear death or the sting of death, backed by the knowledge that death is not the end of our life. Rather, it is the beginning of our transition to a better and more glorious life. The reason why saints who had previously died were brought back to life was to demonstrate that we can all have eternal life after death. However, this eternal life is not for just anyone. Although every one of us can enjoy eternal life, we must first surrender ourselves completely to God by accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and confessing Him as our personal Savior. Only then will we meet the criteria to enjoy life eternally. And one of the most excellent things that happened after Jesus died 
was that we were instantly given the privilege of becoming heirs to the kingdom of God. Our sins were instantly forgiven. All our sicknesses and iniquities were washed away, and we no longer needed the blood of animals to atone for our sins. After the death of Jesus, we were instantly translated from the kingdom of death to the kingdom of God. We became children of God not because we deserved it, but because Jesus paid the price for us to be recognized as children of God. Before the death of Jesus, mankind had to immediately pay for their sins, either by sacrificing animals or other offerings. And if they could not, they would have to pay with their lives. But after the death of Jesus, we now have the ability to ask for God's mercy by pleading the blood of Jesus, which has greater advantages than the blood of any animal. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, so that we might die to sins and live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. 1 Peter 2 verse 24 We now enjoy divine health and are free from the bondage of sickness because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. How mighty is the sacrifice of Jesus for us. His sacrifice covers every aspect of our lives and there is nothing, absolutely nothing we can do to repay him for the gift of himself. The only thing God wants from us is to endeavor to meet him in glory and to bring as many souls as we can to him. The death of Jesus was not a minor event. Just so you know, a brief summary of what transpired during the death of Jesus Christ is as follows. On the day of the Last Supper, Jesus celebrated it with his disciples in the upper room. After the supper, Jesus washed the feet of his disciples as a symbol of humility and predicted that one of them would betray him that same day and another would deny him. After this, they went to the Garden of Gethsemane, but Judas was not with them because he had already gone to bring the soldiers who would arrest Jesus. Jesus was arrested, underwent various trials, and was taken to Pontius Pilate, who found him innocent but still condemned him to crucifixion. The devil may have thought that he had defeated Jesus when Jesus was condemned to death, but he was in for a very big surprise because Jesus did not stay dead. He went to Hades, fought and defeated the devil, redeemed the souls of men, and gave us all the great privilege of being called the sons of God. In conclusion, we need to understand that Jesus did not die for us because we loved him. He died for us because he loved us, even when we were totally unlovable. No human can love another person as much as Jesus loves us. His love for us is different from natural love. It is a supernatural kind of love. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5 verse 7 to 8 Although Jesus has died for us and paid the price for our redemption, it is still up to us to choose whether we will accept Christ's sacrifice for us. I pray that the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary will never be in vain in our lives. Let us pray. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for your goodness and mercies upon our lives. Thank you for your faithfulness and loving kindness. Thank you for who you are to us, who you have been, and who you will forever be. Thank you for your love, grace upon our lives, for providing our daily bread, and for always coming through for us, proving that you alone are worthy of our praises. Thank you once again for how you have been helping us through this year. Thank you for not allowing us to suffer from hunger or want and for good health. Thank you, dear Lord, for a sound mind and for your unfailing love. We pray that you will accept all of our praises, worship, adoration, and thanksgiving unto your most glorious name. Father, we acknowledge that we have fallen short of your glory. And so, we humble ourselves before your throne of mercy. We ask that you would forgive us our sins and purify our unrighteousness. We pray that you will forgive us for every sin, both those we have committed consciously or unconsciously, by the thoughts of our hearts or even by our actions and inactions. Please, dear God, have mercy upon us. We pray that whatever may stand as a hindrance to our prayers reaching heaven 
Let your mercy speak for us. We thank you, dear Lord, once again for the marvelous sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. Thank you for the salvation of our souls, for drawing us to prayer and power, for bestowing your spiritual gifts upon our lives, and for always lifting us up when we fall. Thank you for not allowing the devil to triumph over our lives. Thank you, dear God, for the gift of life, for divine health, for your peace and love that we continue to enjoy. Father, we thank you for your goodness and mercy, for being our ever-present help in times of need. To you be all the praises forever and ever. Amen. Adonai, we bless your name for the battles you have fought for our households. We are forever grateful. O Lord, we declare that you are good and your mercy endures forever. Be glorified. Again, we ask, O merciful Lord, please have mercy upon us. Forgive all our shortcomings and wash us with your blood in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, we confess that we cannot do anything on our own. We please take over all that concerns us. We pray that you will remain Lord and King over our lives now and forevermore. Have mercy on us, O Lord, and hold us in your embrace. Your word says you will show mercy to whom you will show mercy and that you will have compassion on whom you will have compassion. Father, according to your word, we pray that you will please have mercy and compassion on us and our families and we pray that you will deliver us from all our troubles. We beg that you will not cast us away from your presence, O Lord. Take not your Holy Spirit from us and please, dear God, Restore unto us the joy of our salvation. They looked unto you, Lord, and their faces were enlightened, and they were not ashamed. Confirm this word in our lives, O Lord, because our eyes are upon you. Please, Father, let your love radiate over us and in every aspect of our lives. O Lord, we pray that on this new day, you will do a new thing in our lives. Let our lives be a testament to your glory in the name of Jesus, we pray. Dear God, that you will show the world that we belong to you. Let them know that we serve a living God. We pray that you will fill our lives and our households with joy and celebration. In the name of Jesus Christ, we decree and declare that humanity will feel your existence. Demons will feel your presence and even hell will feel your impact. O oh Lord, I am but a mere human and I know I have made mistakes. I come to you today asking for your mercy and grace. Please forgive us for all our wrongdoings and let them be forgotten. Thank you, dear Jesus, for dying on the cross of Calvary. Thank you for your blood that was shed to save us from our iniquities, for your blood that speaks better things than the blood of Abel, for your blood that cleanses our sins. Thank you for who you are, dear Jesus. Dear Heavenly Father, Words cannot fully express how grateful we are for your amazing love and goodness, which we continue to enjoy every day. Thank you for the cross. Thank you, God, for allowing your Son to die for us so that we might be saved. We do not take any of these for granted. And we say, may your name be praised forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, everlasting Father, because we are certain that you have received our thanksgiving for it is in Jesus' most glorious and loving name we have given thanks. Amen. Thank you to our esteemed viewers for being a part of another exciting moment of studying God's Word. We hope you really enjoyed this video. Please leave us a comment on the lessons you've learned. Trust me, we really enjoy reading your feedback. Please hit the like button and also share this video with all your friends and loved ones. If you have subscribed to this channel, we want to say a very big thank you. If you haven't, please hit the subscribe button so that you will be notified of our latest uploads. We love you all and hope you will continue to bask in the euphoria of God's love. Until we meet again, goodbye for now. God bless you bountifully. Amen.